Welcome, my friends, back to the fog, a world of terror and death where a mad god plays twisted games with frightened survivors and ruthless killers. In this realm, the lines of morality are blurred and law has no meaning in this world. There are only those who live and those who die. In the real world, sometimes one may do heinous and terrible things, but for righteous reasons. But there is no place for such moralizing here. That is why the Jigsaw Killer has no place in the realm of the Entity. But his apprentice? She's right at home in this land of madness. Amanda Young was nothing but a worthless drug addict, imprisoned for a crime she didn't commit and stuck with an addiction to heroin and narcotics. Her life was spiraling out of control until the night she woke up with a reverse bear trap on her head. A crude piece of engineering that, when activated, after a certain time limit, would rip her head apart by prying her jaws apart with incredible force. There was only one way to survive. A man was lying unconscious in the room with her, and in his stomach was the key to her trap. She merely had to kill him to, sac to save herself. For any moral individual, this would have been impossibly difficult to do. But for Amanda, she found the will to live stronger than her moral convictions. She cut open the man with her and found her salvation in his stomach. This won her life back to her, but also proved to be the beginning of something new. Thanks to Jigsaw, Amanda felt like she'd found a reason to live. Congratulations. You are still alive. Most people are so ungrateful to be alive, but not you, not anymore. Thanks to Jigsaw, Amanda felt like she'd found a reason to live. She felt indebted to Jigsaw, also known as John Kramer, and devoted herself to him as his assistant and apprentice. Donning a pig mask, which, while seeking new test subjects, she helped in setting up John's traps and bringing new individuals back to John's lairs, even going so far as to set up her own games for John, all to do what John had done for her, test people's will to live. And yet Amanda looked around at the world and saw only disgusting and absent-minded people, foolish sheep in need of slaughter and punishment, not redemption. Not everyone deserved to be redeemed, not everyone deserved salvation like she had. She loved John like he was her own father, and she'd do anything for him, even if that meant going against his ideology. She began making tests and traps that could not be solved, that would kill the subject regardless of if they solved the puzzle or not. John was displeased with her work. Amanda enjoyed causing pain and death too much. Pain could be a punishment, but first it must be presented as potential salvation. As John's cancer slowly began to take his life week by week, Amanda kept trying to please him, even if it broke his wishes. This was demonstrated on a recently elected mayor who knowingly polluted the town's water supply to avoid tax increases. Given the task of deciding her punishment and game, Amanda deliberately sabotaged it to cause the mayor's death. But the mayor proved more clever than Amanda expected. She used the game itself to cut off her own foot to free herself from the trap and to escape. Amanda was furious, and John was fed up. Amanda was not a suitable candidate to replace him. She was in need of another test. John Kramer, the Jigsaw Killer, was dying, bedridden, and he used this as Amanda's test. In a clever and calculated manner, John played off of Amanda's insecurities and jealousy and gave her a game to see if she would be able to save a life rather than take it. She failed, killing an innocent woman out of spite and jealousy and misery. But in doing so, she inadvertently ruined more than that as the angry and vengeful husband of her victim, Lynn, arrived just in time to shoot Amanda in the throat. 
John then revealed to her as she bled out the truth. None of her games were designed to save people. All of them were designed to kill. They were all inescapable, unbeatable, and all bloodthirsty. John's personal tests were designed to give people second chances, but Amanda didn't believe in redemption or second chances. So this test was for her, to see if she could save someone else's life, to give a second chance. She had failed and now would die. Amanda sank into blackness. But another force claimed her after death. The Entity had plans for someone like Amanda, even if John Kramer didn't. The Entity was not as interested in Jigsaw himself. John's goal was to offer redemption, but redemption simply isn't entertaining. But Amanda? She wants death. She wants punishment. She craves blood. That is far more entertaining. But for that reason, Amanda can't simply be Amanda Young anymore. No, she would be reborn with a new face, a face more relative of her outlook on life. Rotten, detestable, and ugly. A pig face. Amanda now cannot remove the pig head she is adorned with. She is now loose in the Entity's realm to deliver her cruel and twisted sense of vengeance on the world, all hidden behind a pig mask. This was just another test, another chance, she thought. John still needed her, and she would prove herself to him again and again. She would be his piglet his disciple, his daughter. She hadn't failed him yet, and she would never fail him. She was to carry on his work after all. But the Entity knew the truth. John Kramer was dead, and there were no second chances for her anymore. Amanda Young was no more. Only the pig remains. I have very little experience with the Saw series, as you know, but from the information I gathered and the clips I was able to put together, I can see why people like it. Lots of mind games and clever puzzles to work through, as well as some frightening gore and horror stuff to spice it up. But if I'm being honest, it's just not for me. I've seen several videos and points where people try to argue that the pig is a great addition or a bad addition, some saying her lore is fantastic while others say it's terrible. But speaking as someone who, who has a limited understanding on the franchise and just taking in what I can, I think her story is great, but her presence is not. What I mean by that is this, Saw is all about forcing victims to recognize their faults by solving complex but life-threatening puzzles. Even though Amanda herself doesn't offer true redemption, the puzzle is still a critical aspect of the franchise. But there isn't really that in Dead by Daylight. There can't be. The closest you get is the power that Amanda has, which we'll get into, and I commend the creators for being creative with the concept, but at the same time, I feel as if the stalking and hunting aspect of Amanda is a little off. But still, I'm aware that there's no way around that reality. It's just the nature of the game. For what it is, I think she's fine. I like the concept of a person who was redeemed but can't believe others can do the same thing. She sinks deeper into depravity than before and becomes the agent of her own destruction. She lost sight of her basic humanity and essentially becomes more bestial, more pig-like, if you will. To be honest, when I first heard Amanda called the pig, my first thought was Lord of the Flies. In that book, the pig head in Lord of the Flies was symbolic of the beast, the primal killing force within all of humanity, a wretched and terrifying aspect to ourselves that we choose not to acknowledge but rests within us all the same. I personally thought that was the meaning behind the pig head, because the few clips of Saw I've seen didn't show the pig head all that often, though, before you send me any links, after watching more clips, I now see it more frequently, so I now know where it's coming from, I get it. But I still think the tie-in to the idea of Lord of the Flies is a fitting one. And, okay, call me a little twisted here if you like, but I think it would have been even more poetic if the Entity turned Amanda's head or face into a literal pig head rather than just keeping her mask on. It would reveal the true beast within that she always was, making your inside nature show physically, making her more monstrous in nature, more of a literal manifestation of her terror. But like giving her like almost a body horror kind of thing but that's just my thoughts as a character amanda works well but now i know what you really want to talk about you want to talk gameplay so let's get into it <clears throat> amanda's power is jigsaw's baptism amanda can crouch down at any time by pressing the power button while crouched amanda moves slower but is undetectable meaning you can't hear her tear radius by holding down the power button again, Amanda can do a lunging pounce attack that causes her to leap forward far faster than normal to land a single normal attack on a survivor. Ah! This pouncing ability is nice, but not what Amanda is known for. 
At the start of the trial, the pig will have four reverse bear traps in her inventory. When downing a survivor, the pig can place a reverse bear trap on the head of the downed survivor, and there it will remain. The bear trap at this point is inactive and harmless, but if a generator is completed, the inactive bear trap will turn on. If the survivor cannot remove the bear trap in 150 seconds, the reverse bear trap will activate, snapping shut, and destroying the survivor's head and killing them, which counts as a sacrifice. If the survivor is down, hooked, or in an active chase, the bear trap timer will pause. The only way to remove a reverse bear trap is to go around the map in search of the five jigsaw boxes located in the map. By interacting with a jigsaw box, the survivor can attempt to remove the reverse bear trap. If the box does not remove the trap, the jigsaw puppet will cackle at the survivor and give away their location to the killer. The survivor must keep searching different boxes until they find the key to remove their bear trap. Also, it's worth noting that a survivor cannot escape the trial while their bear trap is active. If they try, it will kill them as they reach the exit gates. This power discourages survivors from re of working on generators, as doing so will potentially doom their comrades in the process. It does a great job of nodding to the idea of altruism can be the consequence of objective completion. And I'll translate what that means. By doing the objectives, completing generators, you end up sacrificing someone else's chance of survival. It's kind of dark that way, but it fits. Now the perks of the pig are hangman's trick, surveillance, and make your choice, all of which are decent. Hangman's trick is a decent way of ensuring that the survivors don't get the upper hand of you while trying to hook anyone. If there's one thing the survivors love to do and it's very annoying, it's when you pick up a survivor, one of the, in, one of the other survivors will run ahead of you to the hook you're heading to and sabotage it before you can reach it. Well, when a survivor tries to sabotage a hook, you'll get a noise notification and you'll be able to see the aura of any survivors within six meters of the hook while carrying another survivor. If, Like I said, that tactic is incredibly annoying and now this perk gives you a quick notification of survivors trying to attempt to do it and allows you to work around them. It's not always foolproof, but it's a nice bonus. Surveillance reveals the auras of all regressing generators as white. If the generator begins to progress again, it will switch to a yellow aura for up to 16 seconds, thus letting you know if the generator is being worked on again. Also, the noise of all generator repairs is more audible to you than before, thus making you able to track and keep an eye on generator progress much easier. I find this very helpful so that I can keep an eye on not only where survivors are hiding, but also where generators are being worked on and which generators to uh, stalk around a little bit more. But sometimes, I do like to let a generator get done, especially if I've put a few bear traps on people so that I can uh, start the countdown. And then finally, make your choice. Probably her most famous power of all. When a survivor rescues another survivor from a hook while you're about 32 meters away, the rescuer will scream, giving you an audio notification, and they will be exposed for the next 60 seconds if the perk is at maximum capacity. The perk punishes altruism and provides the pig a way to capitalize on the decisions of the survivors, thus forcing them to make a choice. I've heard lots of people complain about this perk, especially survivors saying, oh man, it's just too overpowered. I don't know, I think it's pretty neat, and I've never been able to capitalize on it, but then again, I'm not that great a player. When it comes to Saw, I've never been a huge fan of it, and that's partially because I haven't watched it. I'm not into the gore and torture and disgusting aspects of it, and while I think John Kramer's philosophy on using torture and uh, death games to convince people to value their lives more, I don't really buy into that. I think John Kramer's a little twisted, but hey, that's the idea. I think it's a cool idea that uh, Dead by Daylight decided to involve Saw, and in some ways I think that they did an okay job. I think that the pig's power is a nice nod to what Jigsaw and what Saw is all about, you know, forcing people to make choices and possibly doom each other based on trying to be more objective, you know, you have to consider each other when making your moves. I think that there's a lot of that involved. And again, with Detective Tap, who I talked about previously, I think that he was an interesting addition to the game, and his perks are pretty good. So all in all, this was a pretty good addition, I'd say, overall. I enjoyed working over these characters, and I had a lot of fun. But you know what, guys? We've done a whole lot of licensed killers and survivors, haven't we? I think it's time we get back to Dead by Daylight's OG series. And who better to talk about next than uh, one of my favorite survivors and one of my least favorite killers that came with her. So stay tuned until next time, guys, and I will see you back in the fog. Take care. <laughs>
Hmm. <laughs>